Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Brave the Second End Layer for the PC. My name is Fatless Bear, this is your Stories Gaming Channel, and today, today we try to unlock the full capacity of our brand new job, Yokai, and then we continue on with the quest. So that said, let's get started, shall we? I hope you all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. And yes, I went ahead and did my grind. I know you probably don't need to do it. Uh, I'm fully aware of that. But I like to, because I like to see what all the jobs can do. And I think it's... I, I really love the job class system in this game. Although I probably won't be abusing any overpowered strats. As you can see from my job list here, Pirate Thief Performer Summoner. I'm mostly going to play the way the game is... I'm not gonna say meant to be played because you can break this game. I mean like you could be like level one and use an overpowered strat and probably be stronger than my entire team. So I, I understand that. It, it's not all about numbers, which is why I didn't mind doing this. But I want to let you guys know what I've done. And I've also, because I've been grinding for JP, unlocked every single outfit by going and purchasing them all. So we have the Eastern War Garb. Some of these look familiar from the previous game. Uh, the Minstrel's Garb, which I actually do think looks kind of cool with his uh, axes. And I may switch to that. The, the normal outfit. And the Research Lab Coat. I really like this one because it looks cool. But I do think I'll go with the gold because it kind of matches his gold axes. Uh, this is probably the cutest uniform that I've seen. The Chompette's Coat. It's literally a, chomp a chomper. I mean, it is so adorable. I love this one. Uh, we have the Bravo Bunny, the Knight's Tunic. The Knight's Tunic looks really good as well, I will say. And the Sky Knight Garb. Sky Knight Garb is basically a default. I, I just love the Chump Pet. I think it's adorable. On you, we have the good old fashioned Onion Knight Garb. We have the United Garb, which is kind of cool. You have the Scholar's Gown, which I like because of the, uh, the glasses. And uh, we have the one that I'm using, uh, the Dimensional Garb. Remember the Dimensional Garb from the first game? This is one of my favorite outfits, and I'm glad uh, it's made a return. Uh, for her, we have the Plains Warden Garb, which looks phenomenal considering she's like my caster. We have Bonsoir Bunny, a Cadet Uniform. This looks great too. I, I will say the Cadet Uniform looks amazing, especially since it does change her hair. You can see that her hair is like curled on this one. So I think this one is one of the most unique ones. And I think it looks great. I, I just think the uh, the black uh, looks phenomenal with the Plains Warden garb. Uh, we have the Vestal garb, which also looks good, but it's got those like, those uh, things near her legs, which like jut out. I'm not a big fan of, otherwise it looks great. And we have the Research Lab coat, which also gives her a pair of glasses. But you know, I, I really like the Plains Warden garb. Although I will say the cadet uniform looks phenomenal as well. I'm really torn between these two, especially since it like curls her hair, which is really, really cool. I do think I'll stick with the cadet uniform for now, or just a bit. Uh, but yeah, so we unlocked all the uniforms. Uh, will the jobs all have level 11s? Now, uh, overall, they don't seem all that amazing. Uh, the one that I probably like the most is the thief, uh, because the thief job gives you it gives you Prince of Thieves, which states that you have a 25% uh, uh, chance of stealing like a super rare item. I have no idea how practical that is or if it even will do anything. But I thought, hey, you know, maybe we could steal something really nice with this. So yeah, I kind of went uh, thief with her. Overall, you know, rocking supremacy, exorcism, summoning, and singing. Nothing too complicated. Uh, part of the reason for this light up this loadout is because we're about to fight some bosses. Uh, you remember these things? Yeah, the uh, they're not dragons though. They're from the they're from the uh, what we call it? Uh, the yokai class. I probably will make Magnolia yokai and keep you as a summoner because he can uh, Amaterasu mist, and Amaterasu mist is ridiculous. Uh, it's basically a full heal. As long as you don't die, right? 
Uh, instead of making her a summoner, I'll probably make her a Diabolist. But we gotta unlock all the spells first. Do you think this is where one of those sin beasts is hiding? I put my peeg on it. But it's just a slab of stone. Very large, yes, but unremarkable. Look out! S something big is happening! I, I just noticed that you and Magnolia sort of match in colors and design because of these outfits. And now I love this outfit even more on Magnolia. Ah! Although the chump outfit is the Look, best. Something's coming out! I don't see anything. But wait, there it is! What is it? Asmodeus, the manifestation of lust! Look sharp, everyone! We remember these things. This is from the um the first game. Uh, all the uh the demons and stuff. Okay, uh let's see. First thing I'm gonna do is lower his defense. And uh, why don't we do the Prince of Thieves? See if we can get anything good from it. Uh, you're going to do Hearts on Fire. And you're going to do the Grand Ship. Couldn't steal anything. Poison. Eh, it's okay. Uh, let's also reduce its magic defense. And I do need a... Oh, we're confused. I didn't realize that. Hmm. It's kind of annoying because she always goes first. Uh, let us use a magnifying glass on it. Aquatic and wind. All right, time to mess this thing up. Uh, let's try doing this two more times. See if it works. Do I not have witchcraft on him? Oh, I'm using the wrong thing. Uh, as you get, you get all these things from being a level 11, which buff you. It, it's, 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 I don't really see any point in that, to be honest. Let's have you go full steam. Uh, why don't we hit it with wind or water? Oh, we did steal something. Elixirs. Nice. Yeah, those quad nines are just wrecking it. You're in prison in the infernal realm. That's kind of annoying. And Asmodeus is down. And we got an elixir for it too. Whew, it's it's gone. We did it. <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> What's this feeling? Asmodeus's power, the power of lust, is ours. But we must hurry to the next monolith. You attain the scroll of lust. Equipment, check. Hearts of Courage, check. Now, Mezumi, let's do this. The, the monument. There it is. Wait. Good grief, is that? Beelzebub, the manifestation of gluttony. Look sharp, everyone. Let's go. I forgot to rest. Should be fine. Should be fine. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I feel confident. Let's 
let's do three of those, and then we'll do the final one just as a mug. Gives me the highest possible chance. And uh, we'll use a magnifying glass, and you can just chill until. Oh, no, no, that's um. Let's have you use a magnifying glass and then grand ship. I know. Physical attack. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's physical and magical attack. Okay, so grand ship and physical magic. Oh, wall elixirs. Excellent. More turrets. Lightning and earth. I'm feeling rain is really, really powerful right now. Like, Curse Summoner Rain is just ridiculous. A lot of confusions, a lot of dreads. Yeah, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. I just gotta wait for all that to wear off, and then I can kill him. What is it, uh, lightning and earth? Uh, so, cut to blue should, uh, really mess him up. Just barely survived. Alright, well, let's, uh, hit him with a bunch of those, and you'll probably die. Oh no, I forgot about this. Oh, I forgot about the glutton. How did I not pop that though? You know how much damage I just did to him? Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. There we go. Problem luck is it. That was a really cool way to kill him, I will say. We did it. Somehow. That was like a hundred thousand damage on one shot. I've seen monsters in my day, but nothing like that. It was like Elzebub's power. The power of gluttony is ours. We've defeated two of the seven great sins, but five still remain. You attain the skull of gun. Just north of Florum, our next target. The, the monument! Another sin beast! Oh, nice timing there. Halavash! Mammon, the manifestation of avarice. Look sharp, everyone! I I wasn't expecting that. I always thought Mammon as um anyway. Uh, all right, let's uh almost looks like the Assyria Queen or the, Eth or the Ethera Queen from Valkyrie Profile. Hmm. Seems like I'm gonna do most of my damage to uh, our mages now. It is a low percentage, so. Fire and wind. Oh, that jerk! Just reset everything. Man. Was it weak to fire? Oh, 
I stole my BP. That was a nice trick. Not gonna help it though. Uh, fire, right? Not gonna do as much damage as Super Magnolia. Still should hurt. And she's out. Three down? Four to go. Everyone's still in one piece? <sighs> More or less. Mammon's power, the power of avarice, is ours! Huzzah. There were seven beasts of sin. Four still remain. You obtained the scroll of greed. Just see so killed this on an island. The, the monument! Another sin beast! Seems the same. Belfagor, the manifestation of sloth. Look sharp, everyone. This thing's so creepy. Alright, uh, same tech? Sure, why not? Actually, uh, let's go ahead and double. Uh, we'll do a physical defense and that defense. Uh, you can keep trying to do that. With a uh, basic uh, mug. Uh, you guys can buff us. An elixir! Cool! I don't know of a shop that can uh, sell elixirs, so stealing elixirs is still good. Okay. Is it completely immune to physical attacks? I did not. Bravely second! Uh, I forgot to use a magnifying glass. I don't mind uh, using SP points, by the way. This one's for you. Oh, with the lightning. Okay. It's aerial. You would think it would be weak to wind as well, but oh well. Just want to make sure. Wait, why did that cure it? Wait, it, it modified. It changes its element. It changes its element every time it's hit. Let's weaken its magic. Uh, this will take a little bit of. Eh, we'll take a little bit of time. It just takes a little bit of strategy. I don't like seeing those though, because that kind of destroys my strategy, but it should be fine. Uh, we just need to keep doing uh, one more for you on Magnolia. And have Magnolia just do all the damage. Okay, then there's these guys, which I'm not really sure what to do with. Bravely second. Well, let's figure out how to hit these things. This one's for Magnolia. Not like how it just keeps going down the line. Okay, so some of them are weak to lightning, some of them are weak to water. So why don't I just use uh, the water to keep damaging him? And eventually he'll just die. Oh, I killed all three of them. Wasn't expecting that. And again, this is why I wanna use uh, one more fuse so she can keep at it. Wait, the lightning? I hope 
I hope it actually hits all four times. It should have, right? Okay, good. Okay, now it's weak to fire. Now it's into water. So we're just gonna do a normal blast here. Okay, now it's like the lightning. down. Tricky boss there. You had to, you had to just watch his movements. Everyone's still in one piece? <sighs> More or less. Belphegor's power, the power of sloth, is ours! There were seven beasts of sin. We've come far, but there's still three I don't know how sold I am on the Okai class though, because a lot of these summons seem to be uh, status ailments of sorts, and there's no way status ailments are gonna work on the final boss. Which, if if I mean honest here, is the only thing that uh, concerns me, or a super boss. But I can imagine ailments won't work on those. So uh, going to Okai just doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to be workable long term but it's still fun to take down the monsters okay we're southwest of starkford the, the monument another sin beast yeah those seem to be the same intros Olivash! satan the manifestation of wrath look sharp everyone Wow, look at that. It looks just ridiculous. All right. Uh, let's hook you up three times. Because I keep forgetting to scout weakness. And you can be the one to do that. The Prince of Thieves on the King of Thieves, I guess. All right, works, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. Uh, we need a sing for uh, Grand Ship. And we need a sing for Heart Sunfire. Oh, it's so elixirs. That one hurt. Wick the water. Makes total sense considering it's got a flaming head. Okay, let's see if we can try to take him out. Don't we have a new thing? Nova? Inflict effect on all allies and enemies. I, I totally forgot. This is our level 11 uh, thing that opened up. Why would you want to do this, though? Like, what spell would you want to cast that would affect all your enemies and all your allies? I mean, all the spells seem to be better if you only hit your allies or if you only hit your enemies. So why would you want to do something that affects everyone? Unless you have items equipped that absorb an element. So you cast this to, like, nuke the enemy and fully heal your team, I suppose? But, so weird. Let's go. Like I said, he doesn't do as much damage as Magnolia. He's more my defensive summoner. Like, I have an offensive one and defensive one. Everyone's still in one piece? <sighs> more or less. Satan's power, the power of wrath, is ours. She is way too Five pumped up about this. 
like she is so fired up over this. I you take the scroll of wrath. Crescent Isle. Or the east of where you fight the bail. Or the ball in this story. of envy look sharp everyone it's basically where the hidden summon was was in the first game i suppose jeez golly what, what's at the top of this thing do i really want to know probably not good lord this thing is frightening so lightning on this guy would probably work best Uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be lightning, but for now, I can just do my normal super buffs. High altitude. Hmm. So I guess physical attacks don't work at all. And I was right, it is lightning. Well, it looks like my spellcasters are really getting a chance to shine on these fights, doesn't it? Not gonna be able to kill it, so let me go ahead and kill it here. There we go. Oh, that's the top. Okay. It's like a little clam or something. <laughs> Calamari's on the menu today, folks. Everyone's still in one piece? <sighs> More or less. Leviathan's power, the power of envy, is ours. All right, everyone. We're down to our last foe. She is so pumped up. Uh, take the skull and just southeast of where Grand Ship is. Um, do you look at the monument? <laughs> huh? We all know the routine by now. <laughs> Care to do the honors, Magnolia? <laughs> ah, that's great. Last but not least, Lucifer, the manifestation of pride. Look sharp, everyone. Oh, that was so amazing. I love that. Hello. Talk about the fallen angel. Dude, I love the way his like wing flutters. It almost looks like he's just batting tiz. Okay. Magnifying. Oh, I need to. I need to use a drink here. And shell split with scale strip. I'll do it twice. And you guys can... Sing away. It's countering my steals. No, it's countering everything. Weak to wind, it's flying, makes sense. Would have been nice if I had that song up earlier, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, what do we need? We need wind. Uh, Svelger. Yeah, I probably said that wrong. I know, I know. I gave him a second rod so I could do more damage. Still not what Magnolia can do though. The last and beast is down. We did it. We really did it. Wait, how many were left? That was it. 
That was uh, the last one. Huh? What's this? Is this gonna be the eighth one? To my ever loyal minister of the right, keep up the hard work, and thanks for all the questions. <laughs> Yoko, yes, I shall redouble my efforts. Again with the croissants. Doesn't she care about anything but food? <laughs> yeah, I'll go stalk. I retain the scroll of pride. Could have swore there was like an eighth one though, because if we look at the job. Yeah, it says Diabolism, level 8. And it was just- Oh, Disguise, we already have that one, never mind. That, that's not a, uh, summon. So do I want to make you a, um, Diabolist? And go with... Could go with Summoning. Go with singing. Innate ability of your job. When casting a spell, have a chance to immediately cast the same spell a second time. That could make these really, 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 really powerful. Erosia. So it looks like we have all these spells too. Consume life. On these four attacks against random foes, each successful hit. 50% is just killing them. Uh, 50% chance of doing damage from one half of the target's max HP. But not effect on bosses. Similar the job of your chosen target. Including access to all job commands. You may use reveal self at any time to exit this state. While the skies will be unable to move when barely second is in effect. Huh. Cancel the support effects regen stop as well as those that nullify styles ailments. And meanwhile, raise your own physical attack. Oh, so we stop the enemy's pluses and we give ourselves pluses. Hmm, this is all enemies. So... Huh. So these are like super versions of these. Like, see, maximum HP will result in KO. Oh, we got a charm ability. That's just nat. This is just great if you want to go for a uh, Catmancer, I suppose. Okay, uh, let's check out our book. It's been a while since we looked at this. And we may have some more things unlocked for humanoids and bosses. Let's start with the bosses first. So we have Brave the Templar, the Grand Marshal of the Duchy of Eternia, the famous Templar, and India's father, of course. After that last battle, it seemed like he would never be able to take up his sword again, and look at, yeah, look at him now, it's unbelievable. The Templar is a powerful enemy to have. He is not a man you can face in battle and expect to walk away unscathed. Of course my father was once a member of the Orthodoxy. I thought we knew what the, I thought we knew the bulk of what had happened between him and the church, but I know. I didn't know anything about his past with guys to profess noise and feel like I lived my whole life without really learning about what my father, about the man that my father is. Well, your life is not over yet. All you need to do is talk with him, and there's no time like the present gets started. Perhaps you can visit that or need a work of his. That's true, and it should be even easier to talk with him now that he's handed over his official duties. Then don't go without me. I would love to learn all that such a leader could teach me. Aww. Bravely Templar, the Grand Marshal of the Eternian Forces holder of the Templar Asterix. When Idia declared herself ready to succeed him as Grand Marshal, Brave sent her off to recover the Grand Marshal sword and shield. Idia found them both, consult with some of the wise rulers in Luckdark, and proved herself ready to rule. Dennis, Genealogia. A Kaiser Oblivion, my elder brother. The entry is titled Dennis Geneal Genealogia. Yes. The enemy that we battled up until we reached the crypts may have been Kaiser Oblivion, but the man we found inside the crypts. 
The man who anguished over our world's fate and struggled so desperately to change it however he could. I want to believe that he was still my brother. He should be remembered as Denny Genealogia. No arguments for me. Anyone else have Paul? Not me. Dennis Genealogia. Age 23 years. A native of Gatalashia. He was the first son born to Greed Genealogia. But upon losing his sword arm and with it his future as a knight of the Crystal Guard, he met with an unhappy fate and was driven out from his home. Driven to despair by his disappointments, he wandered the land and in time met others who had also suffered in this twisted cruel world of ours. He helped those lost souls, fighting together with them as they forged true bonds. The year that the great chasm disappeared, he met with the fairy Anne, or Anna, and learned that he could use the compass of space and time to go into the past to raise founder genealogia, his own ancestor, from history and change the fate of the world. He sat upon the crater of the bell, seizing numerous asterisks that were stored there and unleashing the previous sealed ball, Diamante. Unbeknownst to even the highest levels of orthodoxy, including a holiness of Pope, he constructed his skyhold from Diamant and distributed the asterisks to his allies, raising an army in secret as he prepared for his true offensive. So that's how it all happened. Did you hear all this from your brother himself? I did. Nikolai had also received a letter from my brother, inviting him to join Dennis' side, along with two asterisks. They had been the best friends once. He knew that both Nikolai and Jan were disillusioned with the Crystal Guard and offered them a new cause to fight for, along with the bishop and the fence of Asterix. When everything was in place, Dennis attacked Her Holiness during the ceremony that was to cement the peace between the Orthodoxy and Eternia. He kidnapped her, making her send the crystals of each land out of control to summon the Holy Pillar. Then he used the compass of space and time to take Her Holiness away with him, away from this world. To a world without time, even using the compass within the holy pillar itself was not enough to change this world. But through the power of the hourglass and our own memories, we bravely seized a second chance. We didn't give up. We tried again and for the Kaiser's attack on the ceremony. I'm masking him as none other than my long lost brother, Denny. Though he escaped with the help of his loyal comrades, we cornered him at last to the crypts of House Genealogia, where we fought him now without a mask in a dramatic final countdown or confrontation. Denny Geno Gen Genealogia, holder of the Kaiser Asterix, otherwise known as the Kaiser Oblivion, ruler of the Glans Empire. He rejected the world in its past and sought to rewrite history, realizing only too late that the grand plan would only lead to destruction and chaos. Using the power of the hourglass to pull together our memories and strength, the four of us went back in time to defeat the Kaiser and discover that he was none other than my brother Denny, who had disappeared from home so many years before. And the crypts of House Genealogia, I fully I finally confronted my brother a mass, man to man. Sorry, wrong button. Yoko! The sad creature wished to change the world, and so she created the persona of Yoko. The girl we knew as Yoko, who we met in the little shack. The truth was that she was no princess, but an ancient spirit, known in an old tongue as the Yokai, that had lived for some 4.6 million years and who had fixed her eye on a you here. He was the last descendant of founder genealogy after all, the son of Greed. She believed that he was what she needed in order to raise the world to the next layer, a higher plane. The next layer. What does that even mean? Mingbell said that the dimensional burrow had been hunting her, right? He's been watching over you all this time, hasn't he, idiot? That Mingbell fellow. Mingbell figured out that Yoko was responsible for Gedisla disappearing from our memories. That Yoko girl. Can I help but feel as though I've seen her before somewhere? All the dots. Oops, I almost forgot what I was about to do. Let's see. Yoko. She is a princess Yunohana, 14 years old, and has an older brother, the great swordsman, uh, Dunzaburo. I don't think she's 14 years old if she's 4.6 million years. <laughs> Dunzaburo is known as the Lightning Blade, and Hito of the Five Swords of Yunohana. What well, that actually tells is not known to me at this time. Also, Yoko likes include Inari Sushi and croissants. Yep. Yoko, a powerful spirit entity who has lived for many millennia and the holder of the Yokai Asterix. We first met her in an old house by the sea, where she introduced herself to us as Yoko, Princess Yunahana. At Geyser Grotto, she revealed her true identity, toying with me by forcing me to relive my most traumatic memory from my childhood. 
In Vampire Castle, she shared with us the dark, untold history of her world and my family, which she had seen with her my with her own eyes. Dang it! <clears throat> Keep pressing the wrong button. Uh, Beelzebub, or Beelzebub. A big old octopus wearing a heavy black crown that looks like an instrument of torture. Oh, and he's got huge ears, too. He was strong, though. His gluttony attack lets him recover as much damage as he's taken, restoring his HP, MP, BP. I thought the battle would never end. And don't forget the Octo Whip that deals out eight hits to random targets. Or Demon Eye, leaving us all confused in dread and even stopped in our tracks. Or the fire magic for Raja. None of his attacks left me wanting for more, I'd say, and that acid breath, moving our physical and magical offenses as if the attack itself didn't do enough damage on its own. Beelzebub. He is one of the kings of hell where demon kind reside. He also appears in holy writings again and again as a symbol of evil for good men to defy. Always seem attempted to cheat men and lure them from the path of goodness. There are many tales that still get told about him, that he is the second most powerful demon in the underworld, second only to Satan, or that he once fought by Lucifer's side in heaven. But it's hard to know what to believe. That wise king now was a symbol of greed? He was a great leader once, and thought ever of his people. When he died, he was enshrined as a fertility god, who brought blessed rain upon the earth. And yet, when a new people came and settled upon his lands, they brought their new culture with them and supplanted the old gods. And when they did so, this poor fellow became reviled as a very embodiment of man's greed. A new people? Who? Well, that would be you all, the Crystalis. Beelzebub was a king when the faith which you all know as the old religion was still just emerging as a set of beliefs. He is seen as a demon now, but has also been seen as a prophet. He has used his power to save men from the ravages of the past. I believe that he has a certain humanity about him in his very gluttony. Beelzebub, the manifestation of gluttony, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. One of the most terrible of all fiends, ruler of demons in the demon world. He was once a wise king who cared for his people, and after death became a god of fertile soils. But then the foreign crystal faith supplanted the native creed. He was scorned and forgotten until he returned as a demon. Lucifer Raw muscles exposed beneath a shell of steel, beautiful wings holding a lone, hiding a lone arm in a sword. That winged little murgurgurgur, nullifying all the boosts that worked so hard to build up while he just kept getting stronger and stronger himself. It was indeed a move that reeked of pride. Plus, using Modan to attack us all at once and lash him back with that blade of fury and two face, and he only deals as much damage back to us as we managed to deal to him. That's the one he would fire from that mask on his torso, right? Ugh. And his Erosia Wind Attack even goes straight through Magic Mirror. No wonder he's so proud. Lucifer, a once great angel has fallen from grace. Even someone like me who doesn't know much about religion has heard the name. Before the crystals shone the holy light on the wall, this world was said to have been brought about a creator who was referred to as the Lord. And the leader of all the angels who served this creator rebelled against his lord and turned to demon kind. So is Lucifer is simply a traitor? Hmm, I don't know. It seems a bit of an oversimplification to just put it like that. I understand what you mean. It's not like you can't sympathize with his feelings even a little bit, right? I don't follow. Well, the creator made humans in his own likeness and then ordered Lucifer to basically worship and defer to them. Think about it. Lucifer was his creator's right-hand man. He must have been the top of everything back then, and did suddenly get replaced like that? I'm just saying that it's not hard to imagine this kind of despair and frustration he must have felt. I see, and so he became consumed by pride and arrogance. Lucifer, the manifestation of pride, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. A fallen angel whose name means bringer of light. He was once leader of all the angels, but as exiled from the heavens after opposing his lord. He eventually became the leader of demons and arch enemy to his former lord. Satan, four-armed demon that spews flames from its head. Its four blades attack might as well be named Fatal Blades because it will do you win. Its wrath attack has a high chance of inflicting everyone with berserk. Murder, makes me so mad. And he uses Battle Blade to target the person with the lowest HP at the beginning of the turn. Plus, its two blades move deals physical damage to the whole party. Don't forget about the three blades move which reduces everyone's HP to half their max. And if your current HP is lower than your max HP, Four blades will double the damage you've taken so far. It's basically a death sentence after taking a hit from the three blades. Revenge might help for a while, but once it pulls out that four blades, nope. He's simply impossible. Who rained on his parade? I dare say that the whole world has rained on his parade. 
He is filled with a rage directed at the humans who are so small and without pride. A rage against the creator responsible for his existence. And anger toward himself for defying that creator. It is said that Satan was once the greatest of angels, a leader of their kind, but he became hostile towards his lord and master, and raised a host of those who sided with him to wage war upon the creator. The story goes that he lost the war and was cast out of heaven along with his supporters as becoming a demon. But some say the battle still wages on in our world, and it will be the actions of humanity which decide the victor. What was the cause of his original anger at his creator? The humans which his creator dreamed up and then brought into being along with his rage? The Manifestation of Roth, one of the great seven sins released by Yoko. Once a great angel who led others in other angels in service of the Lord Creator. However, Satan would later defy his Lord and he formed a rebellious army of like minded angels. Some say that this world is a very battleground upon which the forces of the Creator and the demons wage the war. Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, whatever pronunciation you prefer. Apparently, this space within his cape connects to another world. With this lust ability, there's a good chance it will leave the whole party charmed. You, you be careful! What? I'm more worried about his venomous thing. Not only does physical damage to target, it can also leave that target to sleep, paralyzed, blinded, silenced, confused, and even poisoned. He's also got that dash up his sleeve, which will deal lightning damage to the whole group and go straight through Magic Mirror. Call of the Infernal can pull one of us under that cape and into another world, so what happens when all of us are sucked into there? Well, we won't be writing any more notes in here, that's for sure. Oh, the horror! So what kind of monster is this Asmodeus? I'm afraid there's not much detail provided about him in the scriptures. There's a bit mentioned in the records of the old religion. He's a prince of some sort, ruling over the east. He leads 72 legions and ranks as 32nd in the hierarchy of demons. He seems delighted when others treat him with dignity and don't seem shocked by his er, unworldly appearance. And he has been known to give out food and jewels, as well as teaching humans about geometry and astronomy's secrets. I don't know how much I trust the sources though. And now he just sounds like a creepy old man offering free sweets to children. The Manifestation of Lust, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. Missing from the Chronicles of Orthodoxy and barely mentioned in the records of Old Faith. Honored among the demons of the East, he is ranked 32 among all feeds and leads an army of 72 divisions. Maman. A demon of greed and avarice. He definitely wants something. That looks like a she. Yeah, there's not many things greedier than his avarice ability that steals a whole party's HP. I guess I was wrong. Huh. Unless, of course, it's that stat leech that lowers all our attack and defense stats while boosting all of his. His blizzagic puts through magic mirror, too. When he makes the whole party with his death claws and dishes out physical damage by the boatload, they can be a boatload, they can be a real instrument of destruction. His name was originally just a word meaning riches or wealth, but it was personified in the Middle Ages and now has come to represent one of the seven kings of hell. So Maman went from an idea to a figure, from an idea to a figure in the Middle Ages, now he's gone from a figure to a demon. While well, in the Middle Ages, Mammon was made into a symbol to be hated, in order to guide people onto the right path. Thus, it was given human characteristics and all of them bad. It was once a religion that ruled the world for a positively dizzy length of time. That religion fell into corruption though, and its leaders bled money from the people as if it was their true purpose, asking always for donations while wasting their believers' money on extravagances. Any who refused to donate to the faith were branded and decried as worshipping Mammon over the faith. It was terribly cool and ironic. It was disgusting, is more like it. Yeah. The Manifestation of Avarice, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. Name once simply meant wealth or riches, but over the course of time, the idea was personified to find as Mammon, who eventually became one of the seven lords of hell. Belphegor. Ugh, this thing keeps on fighting without getting out from its nice round throne. It's the epitome of laziness. Watch out for its sloth, which nullifies any buffs you build up and makes you weak to all elements. The spherical throw on that ride shoots out non-elemental lasers to deal massive physical damage with its diffusion ray. It has Raja, the fire-based magic attack, that targets all foes. Plus Blizzaja, the water-based magic attack, that does the same. And then Thundaja, the lightning-based version. And somebody sphere will use all of them. I don't know why they call it efficient or just being lazy. Just looking at it sitting in that chair, the entire battle, oh, it drives me nuts. I just want to knock it out and force it to expend even a shred of energy. And that creepy little laugh. It's the most annoying thing I've ever wanted to destroy. It seems pretty effective at reaching our female fighters, at least. Being able to inspire such rage in opponents by doing nothing more than seeing there, indeed, I don't know whether they call it laziness or brilliance. Belphegor. 
Manifestation Sloth, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. Originally, he was an ancient god worshipped in times before the old faith. However, with the rise of crystallism, he began to fade from the people's memories and he turned into a demon. Bye-bye, then. You can actually see the top of him now. The four-headed snake-like creature has two modes it can switch between at well. One makes physical attacks ineffective, while the other does the same from magics. With Envy, it can notify the boss we try to give ourselves while also lowering all our defensive offensive stats. And as with Azure, the boss spell targets all enemies and goes right through Magic Mirror. High Altitude makes it immune to physical damage. Then its anti-magic mode is a merciless physical attack mode. Consume life deals four physical blows to random targets and sometimes even deals an instant KO. The last light deals non-elemental physical damage to the entire party too. Amazing, somehow even listing its abilities is infuriating. It was once a beast that lived in the ocean, right? I feel like I've seen drawings of this thing like off the aisle, uh, like on the edges of maps and things. That's right. The stories say that the behemoth was given the land to rule as the greatest among beasts, while Leviathan was given the seas. When the end of days come, the two will both be served up to the righteous. Wow, that sounds like quite the Last Supper. So, did this one also become classified as a demon after the Middle Ages? It did, and it gained quite the impressive name when it did so. Okay, uh, let's hear it then. Alright, I'll tell you, but don't be shocked. Its title, unbelievable though it might seem, is officially the Grand Admiral of the Demon Navies. <laughs> That's awesome. And? Is that actually a pretty legit name for such a powerful being? Yeah, it is. Leviathan, the Manifestation of Envy, one of the seven great sins released by Yoko. Leviathan was the name of a monster that lived in the ocean depths. In the Middle Ages, people began to view him as a demon and ally of Satan. And thus, he secured his place as a Grand Admiral of the Demon Navies. I guess we'll read through these. I don't have them all unlocked, but... I mean... <laughs> I probably won't have them all unlocked. So while we're here, let's just see what we have. Uh, Bale 6, Snowcap. A giant snow demon. It causes the heavy stars that want to make itself bigger. With so storm, it can bring heavy stars which deal wide damage to everyone on the battlefield. It can leave people frozen stiff. It is also how Snowcap can grow larger and larger. As Snowcap gets bigger, its stats also increase in turn. And when it reaches its biggest size, it can use Avalanche. It is Snowcap's most powerful move, a water elemental magic that hits everyone, even through Magic Mirror. Bale 5 Urchin it's like a giant sea urchin that has spread umbrellas, flower pattern umbrellas. More importantly, what the heck is that round black thing in the middle? Maybe it really is a sea urchin. Just sit aside for the moment that I got its uh, flower pattern umbrellas and legs growing out of it. Yes, I have to agree. I racked my brain and a sea urchin really seems to be the closest fit. Okay, so we'll call this Bale Urchin then. He uses the same day to call it shadow casters that cast arc every time we lift a finger. And Cloudy Sky deals dark type magic, damage to everyone, and may also leave us blinded. Then Downpour is an attack where it fires its abilities off like spikes and four blows to random targets. Those are its basic moves, right? Basic, yes, but all powerful. And then it goes and goes and opens up all those darn umbrellas with its rainfall move. And that 9999 guard, murder, grr. Secure sort of protection, isn't it? Don't find any attack that deals less than 1 9 in damage. That rainy sky and the floor umbrellas. Then could it be, are those glowing lines isobars? Isobars? Ah yes, isobars are a way of illustrating areas of equal parts of atmospheric pressure. Though I suppose that doesn't mean much to you, does it? In short, they are used in meteorological predictions. I see, so to help you predict the weather, like the shape of the clouds you see coming over the surrounding mountains. Yeah, I like the way you hope for a blizzard to come along and get you out of school. I think that uh, might be different, something different. The most important thing to focus on now is how to do something about that quad 9 guard move. You'll simply need to deal more than quad 9 in damage with a single move. That should be no problem for you at all. Mm -hmm. This is a giant sea urchin monster, maybe. It has a massive brown body that bristles with spines, like just like a sea urchin, except that it can open and close them like an umbrella. The glowing curved lines that run over its body resemble isobars on a weather map. Always in the background, flowers a gloomy rain, lending a sense of drama and menace every encounter. Ball the Fourth, Goldie. A giant red fish with glittering eyes and a gut full of pretend jewels. Those, these mad ball feed on one another to get stronger and stronger, and that's what it looks like anyway. 
I'll see what you mean. First, use incubation to summon up three little comets, and then the comets use replica to boost its physical offenses and defenses to grant it regenerative powers. Ball the third, Apparati. This ball is covered in test tubes and appears in a space that looks like a lab. I think those are tools used for scientific experiments. Its fingers and legs are all test tubes, and those hexagons covering its body look like images of chemical compounds, don't they? Mm, well, if you say so. And notes its attack names sound pretty scientific too? Flame test lets loose seven shots of fire at random targets, while also leave them weak to water type attacks. Electrolyte Solution is a water-based attack that hits all opponents at once and leaves them weak to lightning. Electro Electrolysis deals lightning-based physical damage to the whole party and makes everyone weak to fire next. It doles out weaknesses and then strikes right at them with its next attacks. We'll need to be quick to nullify any weaknesses and keep on top of healing the party's HP. And it won't do to forget about Action Reaction, which annoyingly deals out all of the damage a party has taken that turn both physical and magical, and deals it right back to one opponent at random. Flame test, electrolyte solution, electrolysis, and action reaction. They are all words I once used daily in my working life. How nostalgic. How amazing is what I like to say. Can't match a life in which I might use words like this every day. Paul Third, Apparati. Experimental devices, body covered with formulas, rubber tubes, and filled test tubes. Observe also the static kiss of monitors. Bubbles rising in liquids in the shadow of leaves on the blinds. Obviously, this is seen in an experiment of some kind, but what does it mean? Is it more of a than just a scientist's workstation? Have I never seen Ball the Second? Out of all my time playing this game, this has never appeared? Huh. Ball the First, Turtle Dove. A mad white bird wearing a bridal veil. If can use triangular, a mood that strikes fear and not any heart. Look, a church high on the hill, it's the kind of wedding many girls probably dream of, some more than others. And beneath an instant veil hides a veritable monster. Yes, sounds like just like most men's ideas of a wedding as well. You're not wrong. Hey, that's not entirely true. With fall in love, it attacks single targets and leaves them beside it and charmed. Any enemies that are turned will be hit with the powerful damage of heartbreak. Well, I can't really blame it for using attacks like this, they're cool but accurate. But Triangler is too much. At least two party members in love with the same person. Erk, yes, well, that turns any ghost dream into a nightmare. Just seeing. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like we have five more boss fights in the game, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess that was a good time to grind. I mean, Ball, ball 2, you know, just never appeared in the moon. But sure enough, we have one, two, three, four, five more boss fights, and we're done. Diamante. This is the ball that destroyed Magnolia's home, her greatest enemy, and is the first ball we saw here on the surface of Luxendark. The moon based Fort Loon was destroyed by Diamante before it descended upon Eternia, making for Central Command, but it was intercepted before it arrived there. As a result, Diamante crashed in western Eternia, creating a huge crater lake when it did. Tiamat bowed on, and when it fell a second time, it dealt a blow to the Miasma Woods and divided the continent, which used to be one, into two. And that was when Sagitta, following a plan that had been laid out long before, used an SB cannon to shoot Diamant uh, down. The exhausted ball was able to be sealed away in the northern crater. And then the Kaiser led an assault on that crater. He seized Diamant, who had been sealed away as well as the asterisk stored there, and from that point onward, Diamant slept away within the skyhold. And in the world we reached using Bravely Second, Anne tried once again to destroy the moon, but this time she failed, and her rage only fueled Diamant's own anger, and was in a real battle. A unicorn beast made of mirrors which reflected back our attacks to protect the woman riding upon its back. Though it kept regenerating its mirrored shell, we also kept smashing away until we could reach the true body of Diamant beneath it. Brilliancy is a magical attack that deals light damage to the entire party, and if it hits you without any protection in place, you'll be out like a light yourself. Dispersion deals non-elemental damage to a lone target. It also has its own effects, which make it impossible to choose any action except for summoning a friend, defaulting or fleeing for the three turns. Scintillation will deal six physical hits to random targets. They all feel some attacks I do expect from a ball. Diamond kept regenerating over and over, no matter how many times we defeated it. Then Anna ordered it to destroy Luck in the Dark, and my brother, Denny, he... 
He used a compass to space and time and sacrificed himself to take Diamant away so it would never trouble our world again. He had his coup to gravy. Wow, that's a... That's, that's, that's a... That's a bestiary that I'm... I'm glad I read. That was very touching. Diamant. The demon that destroyed Fort Loon and the first ball to descend to Luxendark. A great power once kept Diamant sealed away in a cold, faraway place, but then the Empire forces abated. After that, Diamant slept within the skyhold. We were barely able to hold off in a grueling fight that took place in the world we reached after pulling our powers to bravely second. Later, my brother Denny sacrificed himself and banished the monster to the far side of space and time. Alright, we'll read through the humanoids next time. For me, I mostly want to read through the bosses because I think those are probably the most important things to read through. Uh, but we'll read through the, uh, like I said, the humanoids another day. For now, my dear friends, uh, I love you all so very much, and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic day. Uh, we're on to the next exclamation mark next. I believe that's what we have to do. Well, I'm gonna go rest first, and then we'll head there. Uh, but for now, I hope you have, like I said, have a wonderful, fantastic day, and until next time, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.